idea of Mavis, like what started the idea? Okay, what, what inspired the film? Well, um, I get asked this question a lot, and um, I have been practicing Buddhism for several years, and also had a strong interest in making documentaries. Um, so when I started practicing, I thought, I want to make a film that reaches out to young people, and I want it to be a film that is overtly about the Dharma because I didn't. I saw that there was a hole that needed to be filled. You know, there were lots of films on Buddhism, but nothing that really spoke to people, to their hearts. So I read um, Noah's story that he wrote in Tricycle Magazine in 2000, and then his book Dharma Punks came out, and I realized it had recently hit the shelves, so I just contacted him. I'm one of these people who is going to ask you what Dharma means. <laughs> hmm, I, I hesitate to answer He's pointing a microphone to me because sometimes Noah and I argue over, or disagree, agree to disagree over um, the definitions of um, various terms in Buddhism. I practice with the new Kadapa tradition, so I learned a lot from Noah during the filming of this, but my main tradition is a Tibetan tradition, a new Kadapa tradition, and he's um, Theravadan. Um, so my definition of the of Dharma is um, the teachings of the Buddha or the truth. Um, simply uh, the destruction of greed, hatred, and delusion. And all of the forms that greed and the simple forms of attachment and clinging and craving and aversion or, or hatred and the simple forms of aversion to pain and anger and violence and delusion in the self-centered tendency or the taking this whole human experience too personally is the destruction of, you know, that, that meditation leads to. That's my two cents. Do you have a different? Sounds good. Nope. <laughs> Great question. How does your ego respond to watching a movie about yourself? I'm not sure. The first time, I watched most of it the first, I didn't actually watch it tonight, I saw a couple of pieces. The first time I watched it, uh, there was some judgment, you know, like the kind of self-critical, uh, I look stupid, I sound stupid, <laughs> kind of self-judgment type of things. Um, and then there was a lot of sadness too, uh, for me, a lot of grief came up around, especially the parts about dead friends or you know, seeing my parents in this elderly state, or seeing my mother in this emotional place, or... Um, so there was, you know, it was mixed, like up and down. You know, some inflation, some deflation, some uh, judgment. Lots of different levels. And I've really only watched it the... kind of the first time, and then the second time in Canada, I watched a piece of it, and then tonight I saw a couple of pieces, but I'm actually not that interested in watching myself or people talk about me. I like that answer. I can relate to that. You know, one of my favorite. <laughs> yeah, one of my favorite authors, Zadie Ballard, talked about how he hates mirrors and, and never likes to look at himself shaving and things like that. And that's why I just shave while I'm on the toilet. I'm trying to combine both things at once and all the time.
Yes. I think uh, he's asking in order to recite the eight noble truths at the end, which of course I had forgotten if they have been cited before or earlier in the film. Well, it's the basic um, directions to freedom, beginning with having a sort of knowledge and understanding of, of the reality of this world, the truth that everything is impermanent, the truth that suffering is created based on clinging and aversion. So first understanding, and then once you understand the way that it is here, breaking the deluded conditioning that maybe we have been raised with. So right understanding. Then having the right intention. Making sure that if you want freedom from suffering, uh, as my father said, that you're pointed in the right direction. That your ship is pointed towards non-suffering, towards kindness, uh, towards generosity, towards forgiveness. So with understanding and intention, then comes uh, making sure that your actions are in line with uh, not causing harm to yourself or others. And that your speech is in line with not causing harm to yourself or others. And that your livelihood is in line with not causing harm to yourself or others. And from all of those sort of, uh, the first two are more sort of knowledge-based, the second three uh, or four are uh, ethical behavior-based. And then the last three are all about meditation. That if you really want to be free from suffering, it's going to take a deep commitment to mindfulness and concentration and all of the effort and, and energetic uh, rigor that it takes to train our minds, to go against this normal survival instinct that's in all of us, that is clinging to pleasure, that is aversion to pain. And so that's the path of mindfulness. That's the Eightfold Path. I thought it was really interesting how the movie kind of shows the relationship between um, you know and your father. I was wondering if you are follow the same tradition as your father, and um, if you feel like your Buddhist practice is possibly more hardcore or less hardcore than your father. <laughs> <laughs> wow, what, a, what an ad -a, ad -a whole question, I guess. <laughs> Do you feel your practice is it's kind of more hardcore when your father is, something like that. <laughs> uh, my, my feeling is, is that my father is um, of that generation of the 60s that sort of did this, all things Eastern are good. <laughs> right? And they sort of mixed up Hinduism, Buddhism, whatever. <laughs> right? It's from India, it must be sacred. <laughs> it's on, on a little bit of, you know, Ram Dass and my father and, you know, a lot of these early, you know, mixing up guru worship with Vipassana meditation. And so my Buddhism uh, is free from, on some level, free from a lot of the other traditions that they were involved in, are involved in. Um, so, and my father actually would say that he's not a Buddhist. I, on some level, would say that I'm not a Buddhist either, except for I am, <laughs> for all intents and purposes. But the label, you know, we don't like the label so much. So, yeah, and even, you know, we'll get into it sometimes, Dad and I, in this sort of Dharma combat about, you know, like, you're, you know, like, what is all of this grace of the guru bullshit fantasy that you're talking about? <laughs> but, like, what does that have to do with reality and about real spiritual transformation? And he'll think, like, oh, you're just being, you know, Theravadan. You're being too strict. You're not being open to the mystery. And so, yes, definitely. <laughs> my, the my perspectives are very Buddhist. And his are much broader than Buddhism. Minor narrow. You are more hardcore. <laughs> I don't know. I wouldn't say hardcore, but small-minded. 